Hello, just Jamie here. So if you've been following my channel since the beginning, probably just over a year ago now, uh, you'll probably remember I once did Commodore 64, Amiga, and some uh, retro videos, uh, which seemed pretty popular at the time. And to date, my retro bat uh, tutorial uh, keeps boosted in views, um, which I'm really surprised about, but it seems very popular that one. So for that reason, and I've got a new laptop now, which I can record on really nicely, uh, which is what I'm doing right now with good audio too. I thought I would um, do a new, well, a few guides on uh, emulator tutorials, which are often talked about in questions or asked on, uh, say, Facebook pages. So uh, today we're looking at Dolphin. Uh, so Dolphin emulator supports GameCube and Wii games. Uh, it's been around for quite some time now, probably 12 to 13 years, I'd say. And it's only in the last couple of years it's become very stable with a lot of games. So uh, let's just crack on with this. So if I just open up my web browser, I use Google Chrome. Uh, if you just type in to your search bar Dolphin Emulator, it will be your first result. So let's click on that. Now, uh, Dolphin Emulator, as it says on screen here, it will also support Mac and Linux. Uh, don't have any um, knowledge of this not being the same process with Mac and Linux, I'm guessing it would be. I would say if you happen to be running a Linux operating system, then uh, Dolphin will likely run a lot faster than your average PC. Uh, Mac, I'm guessing, would run the same as Windows, but I'm no expert with Mac. So let's just go ahead and download this. So click on that and we want our latest which was uploaded by the developers uh, one month ago, which is 5.0 stroke 18498. So we got two options here. Actually, we got a few options. So uh, you can also run this on Android. Uh, Mac OS, like I was just saying, um, said R, ARM uh, CPUs. Uh, we also got Windows ARM 64. So ARM is actually uh, kind of like a mini processor. Uh, something like a Raspberry Pi would run um, ARM CPUs. Uh, so for this tutorial, I'm going to get right into Windows Times 64. Uh, Times 64 is just telling you that you need a 64-bit operating system to run this. Uh, we're living in the era nowadays of 64-bit processors. I think 32-bit is kind of uh, steadily disappearing with time. So let's just click on Windows Times 64 and download this RAR file. Now, if you don't understand RAR files or zip files, um, I recommend you look for a separate tutorial. Uh, but what a RAR file is, which in my case is um, a RAR file, um, it just compresses all the files into a pack and then you just extract it to get all the contents of that pack out. It just saves space uh, when uploaders are uploading. So I'm going to just make this a really simple installation. I'm going to drag this um, RAR file onto my desktop and I'm going to just right click and to new to new folder and I'm going to name this folder uh, just simply Dolphin. Whoops. And I'm going to drag this uh, RAR file into the Dolphin folder, open the Dolphin folder I've just created, right click, if I go to Rim RAR, and extract here, this will unzip or extract all the contents, like I was just saying. So just delete this uh, RAR file now, WinRAR archive, we no longer need that. And if I open up the Dolphin folder, we will have lots of files in here. So your applications are the ones which opens up the program. You also got some text documents in here, which will give you a little background information on what this release is gonna have incorporated in it, uh, that type of thing. So if I just double left click on Dolphin, this will open it up. Uh, so your first prompt is going to be, uh, do you want to report information to Dolphin's developers? Um, you know, if you get any problems, uh, that information will be passed on to make bugs, that type of thing, obliterated uh, with later uh, packages, versions of Dolphin. So I'm going to just put no for now, so that's entirely optional. So first things first is that you need to find 
uh, your own games. So we're talking GameCube games and Wii games. So as you can see on screen here in the center, uh, is specifically looking for GameCube and Wii ISOs. Uh, ISOs are literally a disc which has been made into an image format uh, readable by computers rather than physically putting a disc into your machine. So uh, I'm not going to say where you can get your ISOs from, uh, just a simple Google search. Um, so before I go any further on this, let me just tell you that a massive benefit for something like Dolphin uh, emulating GameCube or Wii games uh, well, the things which will benefit a lot of people you can't do on the original hardware is the obvious screen resolutions. So GameCube and Wii, I think, was running at 480p, 480i in it released. Uh, whereas uh, emulators such as Dolphin will, I'm pretty sure, uh, go up to around 8k. So you're going to get smoother textures. You've also got anti-aliasing options to make those jagged edges disappear to essentially make these old games look fairly new. So, once you have got your GameCube and Wii ISOs, and forget about the WADS part just here, we need to uh, set the games directory where Dolphin is going to see your games that you have. So, I'm going to just go ahead and find my directory where my uh, GameCube games are stored. So once you find your uh, directory, uh, it will then load up your games in sequence, alphabetical or uh, numerical order. Um, I own all these games and the purpose I'm using this today is as I was saying, as a retro collector and enthusiast of that type of thing, I like to play these old games in the best possible resolution with the options of using filters, that type of thing, to make games how I want them to look. So you can easily just now double left click on a game of your choice which you own. So I'm going to just go to Auto Modelista, double left click on that. And if you've got a decent system running this on, you will likely get good performance to begin with right from boot. However, I recommend at least a system with a 10th or 11th processor or even 5th to 6th generation processor such as i5 6500 uh, CPU will run these really well. And remember, um, most emulators including this one are very reliant on your CPU. Uh, so you need to ensure that you have got a decent capable CPU and also a fairly good graphics card. I recommend a GPU uh, with at least two or even four gigabyte of video RAM. So if I just go here, I'm using my keyboard for now to see how this performance is gonna act. So everything seems to be running just fine from the get-go of Auto Modelista. And, uh, yeah, this game actually, it's a very, very good game. So I'm also going to show you in this tutorial about another benefit of running something like Dolphin. So I don't think I'm going to go into this game much, as you can see it's running very smoothly if this records properly. So if you have got an older system, a, a desktop or a laptop, and you're suffering lagging issues, that type of thing, I'm going to show you in a sec how to resolve those issues. So uh, yeah, if you double left click on the screen, whoops, on this maximize button, you'll get a full screen. Um, actually, I think it's one of the left buttons to make this entirely full screen. So as you can see, performance on this just get me on my system is superb. So I'm going to shut the stand up and go on to show you uh, something you might not be aware of. If we go down to our search bar for your Windows system, this will work on Windows 10, I'm using Windows 11. If we just search system information, left click on it and it will tell you the hardware you've got. So as you can see here, under processor, I've got 11th gen i7 processor. 
uh, with four cores. It will also tell you other information about which GPU you're using. I'm personally using an RTX uh, with my gaming laptop. So, <clears throat> if you're struggling with uh, stuttering that type of thing, which is quite common on older computers, um, if you're running something like a GT GPU, uh, you might suffer some of those problems. Uh, I think GTX onwards, you're going to be a little bit more acceptable of getting a better performance. But nevertheless, if we go to configuration tab here, uh, the one you need to look for is, whoops, wrong one. If we just go to graphics tab, left click on it, under here, uh, you'll see really important options for your system hardware. So I recommend just leaving this uh, backend option on OpenGL. Uh, some games which won't boot, you might need to change to Vulkan or a DirectX uh, 11 or 12. Personally, I'd recommend DirectX 12. It's the latest DirectX version out. So I'm going to leave that on OpenGL. But if you suffer performance issues, then it's worth looking at your backend uh, you also got aspect ratio. Uh, I would personally stick with 16 by 9, which is kind of like a widescreen format. Or if you want more of the old school uh, look, then go by 43, which is more of a box ratio. But I'm going to just put mine on 469. Now we've got other options here. So we've got V-Sync, which is unchecked. Uh, if you're unaware of what V-Sync is, it means um, that screen tear. So when games are moving, you might often see the uh, screen tear almost as it were. So if you check V-Sync, that will uh, just eliminate um, that from happening. Uh, you also want to put start in full screen. And you've got lots of other options here. You've got enhancements. Now, um, the game was running just now. That's running at a native 6 4 by 528. Um, as I was saying, Dolphin will go up to what I said back then was 8K. Um, it's actually going up to 5K. So, um, progress, and eventually it will likely run at 8K without a doubt. I'm going to just uh, put mine at a 720p for now. Um, and it lies in. Um, I'm going to put this on a modest 4x MSAA. Uh, the higher up you go, the more your system might lag if you've got underpowered system. I find the sweet spot is around two times to four times MSAA. Uh, you also got texture filtering. So um, this is kind of similar to anti-aliasing, but not quite. But again, I'm going to just stick this to around two times anastrophic. And we've also got post-processing effects, so this is filters. So you could have a 16-bit filter where you're going to get limited colors in your games. Uh, you've probably got CRT monitor filters there, but I don't particularly like them too much, so I'm going to just leave it to off. Um, you've also got different options here for hacks, that type of thing, if you've got mods for your games. But everything's looking okay, it's the visuals I'm interested in showing you at the moment. Now, another benefit from something like Dolphin is your choice of controllers. So right here, I'm using a PlayStation 3 uh, six axis controller, which works perfectly well. So to set up your controller for GameCube, uh, if you just click on the controllers tab at the top, if you go to uh, GameCube controllers for this tutorial, I'm looking at GameCube. We just want to select standard controller for GameCube. We then go into configure. And if we go to the device, you'll see uh, we have two options here. It's X input or the Xbox 360 controller for Windows. If I just select that one, uh, PlayStation 3 controllers need uh, specific software to set these up, whereas an Xbox controller doesn't necessarily. So I'm going to just configure this. So we want to uh, click on the buttons here. So remember, this is emulating a GameCube cube controller so if I uh, left click on the X button here and press my own button on the controller you'll see it says button A so this is how you configure your buttons to match the GameCube controllers so that's pretty much it uh, you know, another example is the start which I'm going to just use start on my controller and you've got D-pad all the same thing so 
uh, down I'm going to press down on the d-pad left I'm going to press left on the d-pad on my controller right right on the d-pad and now we got ca calibrate it, um, options for the control stick and the C stick uh, from the GameCube so if I just calibrate that So those are your options for emulating a GameCube controller. Uh, the Wii side of setting up a controller, um, you can actually use a controller like this to play most Wii games, uh, but that's a separate tutorial and it's a little bit tedious, that one, but that's the basics for setting up a controller uh, for GameCube games. So if I just close this down now, and if I go back to say Auto Modelista, Open it up, we should now have 16 by 9 full screen with enhanced uh, resolution like I just selected. So just double left click and here we go. Warning! Capcom! this isn't going to record properly um, then I can assure you this is running fluidly and very smoothly uh, with probably I'd say 60 FPS so running very well but like I said it's really down to uh, your hardware what you're running uh, like I said my uh, GPU is an RTX and I'm running an i7 11th uh, CPU processor with 16 gigabyte of uh, DDR4 or DDR5 RAM I think I've got on my laptop. So again, if it's not coming through so clearly, I can assure you this looks superb. I've got this linked up to my TV via HDMI, and it's running flawlessly. Uh, the control is good, the PS3 controller. So that's about it for this tutorial. Um, I think I'm going to make a separate tutorial for the Wii Cyber uh, Dolphin. But if you've not checked out my other tutorials, check them out, subscribe and hit notifications. Um, I'm going to be uploading quite a few of these type of videos um, in the near future. Uh, now I've got a capable laptop to do it, so, so thanks for watching.